as a lot of us know now, as they knew then, Wings is quite the grand spectacle, exemplifying the irresponsible, ambitious stunt work and photographic danger which was so typical of the silent era in Hollywood, Wings was the first Best Picture Oscar winner, and remains one of the better films to have done so. It is easy for Wings to appeal to a modern audience, although I sometimes wonder whether it is due to the fact that Wings is one of the few silent films they have, or will ever have, seen. The fact is that a lot of the grandiose qualities of Wings, the emphasis on visuals, the death-defying stunts, the elaborate ornate direction, was customary of the silent era, and cinema afterward took a while to return to that sublime visual emphasis. The 1930s are one of the few film decades I would argue is weaker than the previous decade. The only other one I would claim is the 1990s being weaker on the whole than the 1980s. Not that the 90s was a bad decade in cinema, oh, globally, but Hollywood, well, Hollywood and like at least European world cinema, both fell into neoliberal, post-Cold War, high school English class cliches. I don't care for that. William Wellman was a superb artist, if not just for Wings. 1931's The Public Enemy, which helped inaugurate the sound era in Hollywood, quite definitively, as much as Wings had encapsulated the silent era's particular spectacles. And then in the 1940s, The Oxbow Incident is a very celebrated western, and to a lesser extent, celebrated, so is 1946's Yellow Sky, very visual, moody, pathological, and post-psychoanalysis western. Many westerns were post-psychoanalysis, few were conscious of it, certainly. That is it for the Best Picture winners, which I like or couldn't not discuss across time. Tune in next time as we discuss the nominees for Best Picture, which I like across time. That may bore some. We're not going into as experimental underground or video art territory as some might potentially prefer. Even me at times, I'm sure I'll be right sick of this theme by the end of it. Though I often consider that one must know the mainstream canon very well before they embark on trying to understand the designated avant-garde of this medium. Remember, Pablo Picasso, as author John Brunner was happy to point out, had been the premier foremost portrait painter of his time before his transition or effective invention of modernism via his cubist experimentation. And so if we want to truly gauge the overwhelming significance of Michael Snow, Bill Viola, Guy Madden, or Zhang Lu, amongst many, many others, we'll need to explore the more mainstream acclaimed canon and discuss what I do like from the sets, because it is a fascinating means of exploring surface-level film history and culture. That is for sure.